Several people saw 18-year-old Linda Pearson take a ride with a young man from town. Everyone knew who owned the 1957 Chevy. It was the last night of Linda's life, November 16, 1966. Linda did not come home that night. By morning, a search party went out. Residents instinctively looked by the river. It wasn't the search party, but boys fishing who found Linda's body sprawled in a clearing on the riverbank. Bobby Allen was a cop back then and was first on the scene. The way she was laying, just laying there like she would in a funeral home, you know, laid out. And whoever did that put a coat over her. Because that isn't you know, hiding anybody by doing no, that. No, I know, I know. Linda was raped and strangled with a wire or some kind of ligature. Markings on her throat showed she dug frantically at what was wrapped around her neck. Strangulation is such a personal way to murder. The killer had to watch Linda gasp for air and watch her die. A crime such as this, strangulation, uh, sexual assault, it's, it's rage coming out. Um, it's, it's, it is personal. It's Kentucky State Police Detective Scott Lengel's case now. The old file includes the interview with that Chevy driver the day after Linda's body was found. Back in 1966, that teenager made headlines in the Kentucky Post when a friend said he was lying about not being with Linda the night she was killed. He later admitted he picked her up and dropped her off in town alive. Funny thing happened on the way to his polygraph. Shortly before the polygraph was to begin, um, he uh, refused to uh, take the polygraph uh, and requested an attorney. This year, detectives tried for that polygraph again because of new information that came into Kentucky State Police. Again, he agreed to take the polygraph again. His lawyer called to say he changed his mind. But the 65-year-old man told me he gave up something else detectives wanted, evidence for DNA testing. It's at the Kentucky State Lab now and will provide his genetic profile. Genetic testing, or the ability to extract cells from body fluids and tissue and use them to identify a person with near certainty, wasn't around in 1966. Even though evidence from the scene, such as Linda's panties and coat, are missing, there is another possibility for DNA testing. Exhuming Linda's body to look for evidence-rich cells the killer might have left behind. But it is a, a possibility uh, that we have not uh, ruled out. There is something else. The way Linda was killed, it makes Lengel wonder if there are more victims. We are looking at that possibility, um, especially in that time frame. There was a number of different incidents occurring in Cincinnati area in northern Kentucky. The murder of a popular teen last seen on the streets of Dayton, Kentucky, took something from this tiny river town in 1966, a sort of innocence. Everybody was shocked, wanting to know what happened to her, why. After 47 years, the same questions that still need answered. Deborah Dixon, Local 12 News.